episode two of our project building the best Surly Bridge Club. And it's been a few weeks since we posted our first episode, but as we go through this episode, we'll explain why. <laughs> so stay tuned for that. But before we do, I wanna recap the goals of this project. The first goal being, we wanna build the best possible Surly Bridge Club that we can. So we're gonna be making a series of upgrades to this Surly Bridge Club back here and each one with the goal of making it a little bit better. The second goal is to do it at a reasonable cost. So we wanna focus on inexpensive parts that will improve this bike, uh, or at least parts that we think the improvement that we gain outweighs the costs involved. The third goal is we wanna use parts that are readily accessible to anyone so that you can replicate these changes to your bike, whether it's a Surly Bridge Club or a similar bike. So those are the primary goals. We also want to make this bike look as cool as possible. All right guys, let's get going on this bike. So the first major project that we're going to do is to replace the entire drivetrain on our Surly Bridge Club. So why would we do that, you ask? Well, the Bridge Club comes with a one by 11 drivetrain. It's got a 32 tooth chainring in the front and an 11 to 51 cassette in the back. Sur Surly designed this bike with this drivetrain to provide plenty of low end climbing power. So if you've got this bike loaded down and you're gonna be riding a lot of hills, you got plenty of low end gearing, it can handle that just fine. But the concern that we hear from some Surly Bridge Club owners is that they want a little bit more high-end gearing. So uh, if you're trying to keep up with a group ride or you want to go really fast, a lot of times you're going to spin out on the Bridge Club with the 1x11 drivetrain that it has. So the simple answer to that would be to increase the size of the front chainring, put a bigger front chainring on it, but that means that you're going to give up some of the low-end gearing that people like so much about the Bridge Club. And that's really one of the limitations of the 1x11 drivetrain. So the first generation Surly Bridge Club did have a 2x drivetrain. And we thought that was great. I'm not sure why they changed it. It could be parts availability, or it just could be the general trend that everybody has to go to a 1x drivetrain. I'm not sure. but. The challenge with the one by drivetrain is that if you try to get more high end gear, you're gonna lose some low end gear. There's just really no getting around it just due to the limitations of what you have to work with. So with the two by drivetrain, we want to maintain as much as possible the climbing power, the low end gearing on the bike, but also provide a little bit more high end gearing. So that's our goal and uh, we're gonna see what we can do to accomplish that. All right, so I want to say a few things about gear ratio and gear range. Those are really the two measurements that we're going to be talking about here. Uh, the first one, gear range, is the percentage of change between the lowest gear and the highest gear. So the larger number, the, the more range we have. Uh, the second thing is the gear ratio, and that is the ratio between the chainring size on the front and the rear sprocket size on the back. So we'll be talking about a low gear range and a high gear range. Essentially what that means is uh, for each rotation of the crank set, how much rotation of the rear wheel do we get? So on the low end, a low number is good. On the high end, a high number is good. So we'll be talking about that as we look at improving the gear range for the Surly Bridge Club. All right, so by comparison, the current Bridge Club with the one by drivetrain has a gear range of 464%. If we look back at the original Bridge Club, it had a gear range of 545%. So that two by drivetrain gives you a, a pretty good increase in gear range. More importantly, on the low gear ratio and the high gear ratio, the two by maintains a low gear ratio of about 0 0.60, which is pretty similar to what the current Bridge Club has. However, on the high end, the high gear ratio uh, on the 
original Bridge Club 2x drivetrain takes you from a 2.91 to a 3.27. Uh, gear ratio which is a, a good increase on the high end on this project we want to at least get a 3.27 gear range on the high end and we can probably do better than that so that's what we're shooting for in this project original plan was to use a Shimano Q's drivetrain across the board with the 2x front chain ring. So the idea there was that that's a readily available drivetrain, uh, fairly inexpensive, and achieves our goal which is to get more range. In fact, the Q's uh, drivetrain is, is being spec'd on the brand new Surly Bridge Clubs in a 1x. So this gave us similar drivetrain, but gives us the two by with the additional range that we're looking for. So we got all the parts, we put it on the bike, and that's where we ran into a couple of issues. The first issue being the crank set. So Shimano Q's has two available crank sets. So the first is a 3622 tooth crank set, uh, which isn't currently available for some reason in the US. They have a second crank set available, which is what we have here. That's the only one that we could uh, get our hands on at the moment. And it is a 46 30 tooth crank set, which helps a little bit. It gives us, uh, takes a little bit away on the low end, but gives us a pretty good size jump on the high end. So this would, you know, would give us a, an improvement and that's the route we were planning to take. The plan that we had with this crank set fell apart when we realized that the Surly Bridge Club frame has a limitation on the size of the front crank set. And according to Surly specs, that's a 42 tooth chain ring is the maximum that you can put on a bridge club. Um, we might be able to make it work with the medium size frame that we have here, but we were having issues getting it to uh, work with the front derailleur. So we abandoned that approach. So we're going with plan B, which is the new Albin crank set, which has a 42, 26 tooth chain ring, which 42 is the maximum that's allowable on this frame. So can't get any big, bigger than that. And the 26 allows us to maintain the low gearing that we liked about the original bridge club. So really, honestly, this is probably the best chain ring combination for this bike. And if you're trying to build the best early bridge club, why not go with the best chain ring? A couple of things that some folks may object to with this is that it uses a square taper bottom bracket, which doesn't bother me in the least. I've got multiple bikes with a square taper bottom bracket. Um, it, it is what it is. That's what this type of crank set involves. We're going to make that work. The good news about the square taper is that we can vary the spindle length to get the drive line that we're looking for on this bike. So we're going to make that work. And uh, I think this is going to give us the right gear ratio. Uh, one other question you might have is that there's we're going with the uh, chrome version of this, the silver version. This does come in a black version as well. However, I made the executive decision that we wanted to go with silver on this bike. That may give you uh, some hint as to the approach we're gonna take with some of the other parts on this bike. It doesn't have a lot of silver on it at the moment, but that will change over time on this project. So we're going with the silver, why not? It's gonna look great on here, we'll get it put on, and uh, then we'll talk a little bit about the front derailleur. Now let's talk about what turned out to be the most challenging part of this 
drivetrain upgrade, and that is the front derailleur. So Surly specs call for a high direct mount, top load front derailleur. And what that means is basically two things. One is you need a direct mount adapter to mount the front derailleur. And also uh, they've spec'd it with a top loading, which means that the cable is routed on the frame to go into the derailleur from the seat tube. And they've got a, a cable mount here on the seat tube to route that cable in. And if you've got that type of derailleur, it should all work. Unfortunately, Shimano Q's does not have a top loaded derailleur in their lineup. And so we were, you know, thought, well, let's go back and use the older Shimano Dior top loading derailleur. They don't produce this anymore, but we were able to find them. And so we found one and we thought, let's make that work. That's what they used on the original Surly Bridge Club. So that should work for us. However, we ran into another challenge in that we're using a wide ranging uh, front chain ring combination. So we've got a, uh, a 26 small chain ring and a 42 large chain ring. And that is a pretty large uh, range. And unfortunately this Shimano Dior derailleur does not have enough capacity to handle it. The cage is just too small. Almost made it work, but just couldn't get it to work exactly the way we wanted it to. So we had to abandon that approach, which really left us with going back to Shimano Q's and kind of adapting a Shimano Q's front derailleur to work with this frame. So we were able to pick up the Shimano Q's uh, front derailleur direct mount, which is the FD U6000D. It does have the direct mount that we were looking for. However, it is a front loader as opposed to a top loader, which just means we had to get a little bit creative with the cable routing. Uh, I'll pop up a diagram to show how we did it. Works fine, just had to use um, zip ties to uh, route the cable as opposed to using the, the cable routing that's built into the frame, but works just fine. Doesn't look as good probably, but we'll live with that. Does however solve the problem of being able to handle the wide range uh, chain rings that we have on the front. And it does that because the cage on the Q's derailleur just happens to be a little bit bigger and has a little more capacity. So I, I did go back and check and New Albin actually uh, sells this crank set with a larger low gear uh, instead of the 26 tooth uh, low chain ring you can get a 30 tooth low chain ring on this and that would actually allow it to clear the uh, older top loading derailleur so if you wanted to stick with a top loader uh, you could probably get a buy with a 30 tooth low gear it's going to give up just a little bit on the low end but it would allow you to use the top loader so it's you know you got to decide whether that compromise makes sense we may buy a 30 tooth chain ring at some point if we are not ultimately happy with the way this uh, setup works and we could swap it at some point if we wanted to. But for now, we're gonna stick with this. Uh, we like the fact that we've got Shimano Q's drivetrain throughout except for the crank set. And uh, we're gonna see how it performs right like that for a while and see if that's where we wanna be ultimately with this bridge club. All right, so let's quickly go through the numbers for our new and improved Surly Bridge Club with the two by drivetrain. The gear range, we improved it to 573%. That's a huge pickup. Uh, our low gear ratio stayed about the same, but the big improvement is on the high gear ratio going from a 2.91 to a 3.82. That was our primary goal. We've achieved it. In fact, that is even better than the original bridge club with the two by that was uh, had a high gear ratio of 3.27 so major pickup there I will say we're probably uh, stretching the limits of what this bridge club can handle in terms of uh, you know rear rear cassette size going to max there going max range on the front uh, chain rings and crank set so probably maxing this bike out however maybe somebody could 
get a little bit more out of it. I'm not sure. I'd love to see it if possible, but pretty happy with the results. We're going to go out and ride this bike and uh, wrap this video up. All right, before we wrap this video up, there's one very important thing I need to cover, and that is the total cost of this upgrade. Uh, the parts cost came in at just over $357, so not an inexpensive upgrade, but I think it's well worth it. All right, first ride on this bridge club and uh, love the new drivetrain. It's working perfectly. Hope to get more miles on it once the uh, weather gets a little nicer. <laughs> but uh, very happy with it. So I want to just say thank you for watching this uh, video. If you watched to the end, I appreciate it. Sorry about the length of this video. We want to keep them a little shorter than this going forward, but we did have quite a bit of stuff to cover. I also want to apologize for the delay in getting this episode out hopefully the next episodes will be a little quicker but uh, thank you for watching and one last thing if you are interested in a two by upgrade for your surly bridge club we are putting together a couple of kits that you can order from us and uh, we'll be offering those for three hundred dollars so save you a little bit of money if you are interested complete kit and uh, yeah just check our website autobikeandtrail.com for more information about that. Also check our blog where we'll have a story on this bike with a little more details on, <clears throat> on the numbers and the specs and all of that. So hope you enjoyed this video. We'll see you next time for part three. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching, later.